Uh, fuck, it's, it's crazy. I can't believe that uh, Russia has declared war on Ukraine. That as soon as the declaration... There you go. Oh, fuck, that's a missile, that's a fuck. missile! That's a fucking missile! That was one of those, like... Holy shit! Missiles. Jesus Christ. All right, we've got to fucking get inside. I can't fucking believe that. This is the Scar City Studios YouTube channel. Please don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And our sponsors are Alpha Claims and Hire Birmingham, the leading and best accident management company, get a replacement car anywhere in one hour. I think everybody's heard an opinion on what's going on in Ukraine today. And everybody has questions as to what is really going on. And some of the mainstream media are not really helping the situation by publishing images of what a nuclear bomb attack would look like if Russia tried to attack the UK. And on Thursday, Russia launched an invasion of Ukraine in what they said was a special military operation to try to remove the current government. But on the same day that Russia invaded Ukraine, the hacker Collective Anonymous declared a cyber war against Russia and said that they disabled several Russian websites and one of them was RT which is Russia Today and a state-backed news outlet. Social media accounts claiming to represent the group Anonymous said on Thursday evening that they were officially in cyber war against the Russian government and had taken down dozens of websites and some of them were military. And this is in response to the invasion of Ukraine. The websites of the Kremlin, the Duma and the Ministry of Defence and RT were all affected by the cyber attacks and RT ironically reported that they believed that it was a DDoS. So this is a denial of service attack. Anonymous said in a statement, fuck Putin, we support the people of Ukraine, we are legion, we will not forget the lives that have been lost under Putin's regime. Another account from the collective said, the Putin regime are going to have a very hard time recovering from our attacks. Anonymous said that they are targeting the Russian government and there was an inevitability that the private sector would be affected too. They then go on to say in the statement they are a decentralised collective and Anonymous does not represent any hierarchy leadership and thus its operations have been known worldwide for affecting political perspectives. Anonymous have previously been blamed for hacking government websites in America and one of them was the CIA. So that was Anonymous's response to the war that had been declared by Russia which they still say isn't a full-on war. And around the world, people have came out to try to protest against this. And our reporter Dave Nathan went to the protest in London that was arranged by Stop the War Coalition. This is the same protest group that marched in the UK to protest against Iraq. And all these years later, they are back again. Stop the War has several different MPs that actually represent it and one of them is Jeremy Corbyn and they have gathered today in London to protest against the war in Ukraine and to demand that NATO intervenes with a solution. They said in their statement from their official website that Stop the War condemns the movements of Russian troops into Ukraine and urges that they stop immediately. We call for the immediate ceasefire alongside the resumption of diplomatic negotiations to resolve the crisis. This dispute could and should be resolved peacefully and there remains the only basis for a lasting settlement rather than the imposition of military solutions. They say this is a conflict that has gone on because of failed policies and they then went on to criticise NATO and also the US at the expense of other countries for starting major wars and the aggression from USA, Britain and NATO. They also criticise the British government as well and say that they have done nothing but speak up the war effort, not aim for negotiations. The Defence Secretary of Ukraine went onto his Twitter and said that Putin has launched a full-scale invasion of Ukraine. The peaceful Ukrainian cities are under attack and this is a war of aggression and we will defend ourselves and the world needs to help and stop Putin. The time to act is now. So of course there is different opinions from different sides and this is something that you have to understand with war and also to make sure that the sources that you're using are verified and that you double check because what you're going to find right now is that people are uploading videos from wars from 10 years ago just to try to get views and likes on social media. And this adds to the misinformation that you are receiving. So any videos that I post on any of the social medias will be verified. And I won't just post videos because I think it's going to get some views. 
In relation to the Russian side of the situation, they have gathered 190,000 troops over the past few months at the Ukrainian border and the military is prepared to launch the full-on invasion. And this would contravene the security agreements the Soviet Union made upon its breakup in the early 90s. And at the time, Ukraine was a former Soviet Republic and had the third largest atomic arsenal in the world. The US and Russia worked with Ukraine to denuclearize the country and in a series of diplomatic agreements they did arrange to get rid of hundreds of nuclear warheads and gave them back to Russia in exchange for security assistance and to be protected. Russia has also been a big critic of NATO as well and said that the expansion into their areas in Ukraine and having different bases situated was a breach of the agreement that they put in place back in the 90s. And Ukraine is the fourth largest recipient of military funding from the US and also they have intelligence cooperation because initially nobody believed that the US was accurate what they were saying they didn't think was going to happen and then the day after it really did start to come to fruition. And this has been ongoing for decades. Back in 2014, Russia annexed Crimea and there was a war that occurred there. 14,000 people were killed during that conflict. And this is just the start of what is about to occur. So I really want to hear what people have to say and please just message me or comment if you have any questions or any videos that you need fact checking to make sure that you're not watching something that just isn't proven. And also try not to worry too much as well. I'll definitely keep you updated in the coming days and weeks but please don't forget about Palestine and also Yemen as well and I'll follow up with some stories on the website in the following days. Peace. Okay. Just to also kind of point out what we need to do, guys, right now. What is really important, please do not share any bad news with any of your relatives in Ukraine or here. Because what we need, we need a total support of our army and people that we have. Share only good news. Coming to good news, every single time when Russian you know, soldiers try to conquer our land, specifically in northern part or southern, they were actually killed. Basically, our soldiers are fighting really hard. They were fighting near um, one of the major airports near uh, Kiev, but we managed to defend it. And now, even though the Askandars managed to land, I think the artillery is going to shut them off. So, um, coming on the big news as well, if you have any good news, please share with your family. Try to calm them down. Share the info regarding the bomb, you know, kind of the bomb shelters and everything, what we got in Kiev and everything. Check Ukrainian Forbes, they publish every single information about how we should, you know, kind of prepare our people to hide and what to prepare as uh, medical kits, what to prepare in terms of like, you know, uh, the, not the visas, but documents they need to prepare, the food. Please share this type of information, okay? Please double check what you're sharing on Twitter. Oh, God.